Hello, it's Mark from Lightmap. I'm going to show you how to use the new scrim lights in HDR Light Studio. Here we've got this very simple vase being lit by three HDR Light Studio scrim lights. We can see that the visual quality of these lights is very subtle and very realistic. And this is because the lights aren't just gradients mapped onto a light. They represent a physical representation of how a light source is interacting with the scrim. And this allows us to create very realistic and subtle lighting effects. So the purpose of this tutorial is to teach you how to use our new scrim light, how to control it and use all of its features. Okay, so let's start with a blank lighting design. We'll create a new light look. Okay, so let's go to the toolbar and there's a new button for the scrim light. Let's press that to make a scrim light. When we come to the 3D view, let's click on the model to position the light. If I come over to the canvas and I press R, we can scale that light. And I'll press W to move it more central. I'll press Shift and R for non-proportional scale. And then we can scale it to be taller. W to move it. There. Great. So, okay. So let's come over here to our light properties. The content type is scrim light. And at the top of the view, we have a top view showing the top of the scrim paper. And then we have here the light source itself that is shining at the scrim. Over here, we have a front view. The white outline shows the extent of the light itself. So this is the area of the texture that will be used on the light. Now we've got all this space around here because you may want to position the light outside of the texture space and have its effect shine through the texture space. So this is why we have plenty of room so we can manipulate the position of the light wherever we want. Now, when we were coming up with this feature, we wanted it to be really easy to use. And basically we created this interface for positioning a light in 3D relative to the scrim, but that was quite simple to use and easy. We've got lots of sliders down here to control all of the different aspects of the appearance, the size and the position of this light relative to the scrim. Now, rather than using sliders to control this, we thought it was important to give you a user interface to easily manipulate this light. So when your cursor is in these views, you will see that it changes to represent the current tool mode. This is at the moment move. And we can see down here in this drop down, the tool mode is move. There are lots of different tools and these let you control nearly all of the settings below that can be controlled through sliders. So let's go to move. In this view, if I drag, I can move the light up and down relative to the scrim and change the distance. The further away, the softer the lighting. As I get closer, the more focused and brighter the lighting. In this view, using the move mode, I can position the light anywhere I want relative to the scrim outline. So with these controls alone, for positioning the light, I can create lots of different subtle lighting effects. So much easier to control than a gradient. Okay, let's look at the next mode. Let's say scale. So we can scale the size of this light to make it bigger or smaller. And in this view, it does exactly the same thing, proportionally scales the light. Now, 
If I then want to move the light, I could come here and change the mode to move. I can move the light closer. I can then change to scale. But this is a lot of mouse clicks. There's got to be an easier way. There is keyboard shortcuts. So you'll see in this list, after each of the modes, there is the keyboard shortcut for it. Now these keyboard shortcuts are consistent across every view in HDR Light Studio. So if I want to move the light, I press W. So now I can move the light up and down. If I want to move the light in this view, it's W. And now I can move the light. If I want to scale the light, it's R. This will let me scale the light in the render view. If I press R when the cursor is in this view, it will change the mode of this view to scale. So when I'm in this view, I'm not moving the actual light at all. I am moving this light that is pointing at the scrim that creates this effect here. Okay, so what other modes do we have? We have E is for rotate. In this view, it will tilt the light. In this view, it will rotate the light relative to this view. Now for any point we want to reset the light, there is a reset button which will take it straight back to the default settings. Okay, we've also got free scale. So if I press Shift R, we can now change how wide and how tall that light is. So if I bring the light closer, this is easier to see. So Shift R, we can change it in that direction and in that direction. And it doesn't matter what view you do this in, whether it's the top view or the front view, it works just the same. Okay, so we can change the color of the light. And you'll see here that the light type is polygon. The polygon, if I move it closer, has a certain number of sides. By default, four, which represents like a quad light or a softbox behind the screen. If we change this and increase it, we can go all the way up to 25. Now at 25, you essentially have a circle. Uh, we could allow higher settings, but they would take longer to calculate. And we think this is a sweet spot for a nice circle that's nice and fast to calculate. Okay, so there's one more setting and that is called spread. So if I press T, we'll get the spread setting. So we can focus the beam parallel, so you can see a perfect square, and then we could take that all the way through to behave like a softbox. Bring it closer, rotate it. There you go, and let's scale that up. Now you'll see as I'm scaling now, the light is actually intersecting with the scrim and has kind of gone through it. Um, we calculate everything based on it touching the scrim, but we have this extra setting here called surface fade. If I take this to zero, you'll see that there is an absolutely harsh line where the light is hitting the scrim, which is what would happen. That's what you would get. But visually, that can be undesirable. Surface fade introduces an invisible clipping plane, which you can raise up from the scrim surface to prevent this hard edge. It fades the edge. As we increase that, the edge gets softer as this clipping plane that's invisible moves up the light. By default, this setting is 0 0.05. It's a decent setting that will always ensure you have a slight amount of softness on the edge of the light. 
OK. So we can make polygonal lights with any number of sides from a square rectangle through to a circle. We can change its color. We can manipulate where this light is in this view. This view represents the character of the light, how it's angled, its size, it shows the spread. This is about the placement of that character relative to the scrim surface, which is outlined in white. OK, so there's another type of light we can use, and that is the spotlight. The spotlight is obviously a spotlight, and it has no size. The size of it is controlled purely through the spread setting. And we can move this light around just like the polygon light. And when we rotate it like this, you can now see that the light source itself is here, but the effect coming from the light is over here. And this is why we need so much space here so we can manipulate where we want the light to actually be. Okay. So you can get some really nice effects with this light. Let's change the spread a little bit. Now, when you have the spotlight selected, you also get a fall off ramp at the bottom. This controls the brightness of the light from its center to the edge. So we can adjust this using this ramp. And in a dramatic example, I'll add lots of points to kind of show a very banded design. And you can see you can get some very interesting effects. So I bring this closer, change the angle. That looks kind of cool. Now at this point, I'm going to show you the zoom control. Let's say you've got a light appearance that you like a lot. You can see that if I wanted to make this bigger, there'd be quite a few things that I need to do and to manipulate to make that effect bigger. But if you've got an effect that you really like and you just want to scale it, use the zoom control. We can zoom out to fit more of the effect into the view, or we can zoom in. This is a really, really handy control to scale that lighting effect. OK. So something else that you can do to position the lighting effect accurately is to use a, a light paint mode in this view here. So if I come down to the light paint tools, we've got all the normal tools, but you'll see scrim light position has been added. What this lets us do is if I click on the model now, it will use the light paint method here to position that lighting effect. And you can see the light moving over here. But in this example, the actual effect of the light is over here where the position of the light itself, the handle for it, is here. This means that this is doing a terrible job at positioning this light effect. So the handle X and handle Y lets us make an adjustment on this. And I can also control this picking handle as the tool. I can move the handle onto the position, onto the lighting effect, that I want to position. Then when I'm in this view and I click on the model, I'm now positioning this light handle by using a light paint. And that is now driving the position of this light in the space here. This is really handy. So if I just totally reset this and I make this light quite small, bring it to the canvas there, bring it to the scrim and then we use this mode it's much more obvious to see what's happening I can now position within this texture space 
the scrim light here. So we're not moving the physical light in HDR Light Studio. We are simply moving the position of the light within the scrim light content here. And this is just really, really handy if you want to be really precise about you, where you want that lighting effect to start. So I could say, right, I really want it to be focused on here. And then I could come over here. I can then scale that, scale it down, bring it closer to make the effect hotter, take it further away to soften it. So this is the great thing about the scrim light. You are almost sculpting with light. You're not playing with ramps and gradients and two-dimensional representations and, and fake lighting. This is a real interaction of a light with a scrim. And to change what it looks like is a very physical thing. And that makes it really easy to use and to think about how you want to change the light effect. So we've shipped a load of presets actually for the scrim light. So I'm here on the content, scrim light, and there's all these different effects that have been created and I can drag and drop any of those onto the content here. Or I can right click and apply to the current light. And this lets you explore the different settings that are possible to get these different lighting effects. So that's quite a nice way to learn about this. And the great thing is any of these settings, if I apply them, they're just a starting point. You can then make any kind of adjustment that you want to get the effect that you want. So I hope you can see how powerful the scrim lights are. They're best controlled using the keyboard shortcuts and the different modes you have in the view for controlling what they look like. These are totally consistent with the new UI controls that you can use in the render views and the canvas, which is really handy. There's lots of sliders here. There is the number of sides on the polygon. There is the height, which is the distance from the scrim. The tilt, which shows the rotation of the light relative to the scrim. There's the width and the depth, which is the size of the light. There is the spread, which allows you to focus that beam or widen it to soften the lighting. The surface fade, which is used to stop a harsh line when the light intersects with the scrim. It's a clipping plane that softens it. Position X and position Y is the position of the light in this space here. The rotation is the rotation in this view here. We have zoom, which lets us zoom out and zoom into the effect without having to change lots of other settings. And then we have the handle position, which we can also position directly within this view. And that's used when you have light paint mode, scrim light position, and it lets you position that lighting effect using the handle. And that's needed because often the position of the light isn't the same as where the effect is that you want to position. If we change the mode to spotlight, we have an added fall off ramp which controls how the light falls off from the center to the edge of the light. And you can get lots of interesting effects as well using this. So I'll return to our original lighting setup at the beginning. And you can see it's just so realistic. It looks like it's been lit in the studio. And this is what you get by using the new scrim light in HDR Light Studio. Enjoy using it and thanks for watching. Bye bye.